Plenty of movies and shows claim they are based on a true story. However, nine times out of 10, they jump the shark by being much more fiction than science. Fear not, for whenever a show claims to be based on something true, we here at Real vs. Real are there to dissect it. Today's topic is the meme-making sensation Cocaine Bear. The film claims to be based on a true story about a bear, cocaine, and murder. But the real question is, is it realistic? And if it is realistic, how realistic is it truly? And what can we learn about this situation using science and the best research we can find? So let's break down the movie's story, premise, and other intriguing questions to figure out how realistic Cocaine Bear actually is. Now, as this is the crux of the movie, let's set something very clear. Yes, the Cocaine Bear film is heavily based on a real event. However, while this is the case, the actual events are much less interesting than what the movie depicts. The Cocaine Bear, often known as Pablo Escobar or Cokie the Bear, was a black bear that ingested anywhere from 3 grams to 75 pounds of cocaine that had been jettisoned from an aircraft. Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Kenneth Alonso dictated that only 3 to 4 grams of cocaine had been absorbed. So much much cocaine was scattered, it's hard to truly tell. The bear is not known to have caused any deaths, and while no official time of death was ever given, it's assumed he died after doing just a few lines of the drug. At the beginning of the film, we witness Andrew C. Thorin II flying across the country with bags upon bags of cocaine, only to die after jumping from the plane and failing to open his chute due to getting hit pretty hard on the head. This leads to him landing in a driveway in Tennessee, with tons of bags of cocaine being strewn across a forest in Georgia. This was the inciting incident of the film, as the titular cocaine bear then obtains and ingests the cocaine, starting its rampage. So, let's start with the facts. According to the Department of Justice, it seems most cocaine travels via boat or land, with around 60% of cocaine being seized at sea or ports, which leaves a substantial amount of cocaine being transported via airplane as the movie accurately depicts. Now, according to the 2005 National Drug Threat Assessment, the rate at which cocaine was seized increased substantially in 2003, which means in 1985, when the movie was set, not nearly as much was lost. The movie gets this right for the most part. This next question is a pretty important one as it changes the entirety of the film's story. According to Mike McIntosh, who runs the Bear With Us Rehabilitation Center in Ontario, bears can and do snort, but mostly when they're scared. The bear the film is based on only ingested 3-4 to four grams before dying. In an interview with ursinologist Chris Morgan, he mentions that due to the complex brain that bears have, they would very likely be affected by the cocaine, although he hasn't seen any bears addicted to it. This is in line with what we see in the movie, but he also mentions in the same sentence, and if the bear ate as much as I heard, a big portion of cocaine, then that's a death sentence for the bear, just like it would be for humans. Now this doesn't happen in the film as the mother bear doesn't die at the end of the movie. This is a quote we see later on in the film as supposed advice for how to deal with bears of specific type. If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lay down. If it's white, say goodbye. According to WebMD's guide on surviving bears, this is filled to the brim with nuance. The guide mentions that bears approach with two different intentions. The first is a false charge with no intention to attack. In these cases, make yourself big and make lots of noise to drive the bear off. The other is more aggressive, that tends to come with clacking teeth and full speed charges. In these cases, the rhyme actually has a bit of merit, as according to the National Park Service, if attacked by a black bear, you need to find safety, and if that fails, then you should fight back. Just play dead. Quoting the WebMD article, do not play dead. Though it does seem the grizzly and polar bear pieces of advice are a bit better, as they both seem to be rather on point. The cocaine bear we see in the film does a multitude of feats that many would deem unusual, so it begs the question of how strong, fast, durable, and in fact intelligent are black bears. According to the ursinologist Chris Morgan, they have very complex brains, and as such, cocaine would affect them similarly to humans. 
Meanwhile, they can knock over boulders up to 325 pounds with a single paw, and they have a bite force up to 800 psi. Bearwise.org says that black bears can sprint up to 35 miles per hour and can climb 100 feet in 30 seconds, making them 7 miles per hour faster than the fastest human on Earth. However, on the durability side of things, black bears have relatively thin skin and are not hard animals to kill with firearms or bows. There is a scene in the movie where Dee Dee and Henry believe that you're supposed to eat cocaine to get high. How do I do it? You eat it? This is definitely the case for the bear as that's what we see in the film. Now, according to Northeast Addiction Centers, you can actually ingest cocaine like we see in the movie. And eating it causes effects similar to snorting or smoking, although it is associated with less intense effects compared to other methods of use. So, when the two of them make jokes about becoming coke addicts or going to rehab, there is some truth to the matter. But the amount the two ingest is so small, it's hard to think they would have any real adverse side effects. But real quick, if you're enjoying this style video, please consider subscribing. It's the best way to help out our new channel, and we have tons of more videos just like this in the works. Thanks so much. One of the major premises of the film is that not only does the titular bear ingest and become high because of the cocaine, she becomes addicted to it. This is shown when the bear drops everything it's doing just to snort some more coke in a few different scenes. According to urinologist Chris Morgan, bears may not get into cocaine very often, but they may find more natural highs, stating that they likely eat psychedelic mushrooms at times. He also says that it's a PhD thesis waiting to happen, so safe to say the science for this is not particularly concrete. In the second half of the film, Eddie, one of the guys trying to obtain the cocaine that the bear had ingested, is laid on by the bear where he is stuck for a while. Now, according to the IBA, the average female black bear weight is around 130 pounds, which is a lot of weight no matter how you slice it. According to a Forbes Science article, data shows that about 400 pounds on the chest was survivable, which the bear's average weight falls well within. Knowing this, it makes total sense that Eddie would survive so long under the bear with so little issue. So at the end of the day, how realistic is this film? Well, there's two answers here. The movie seems to get a lot of scientific facts right, like how to handle a bear attack, or how strong bears seem to be, or how fast bears can climb up trees. But it also doesn't seem to handle the cocaine aspects as well as it should have. At the end of the day, the movie did some research we commend, but gets some pretty major stuff wrong relating to the premise of the film. Thanks for watching.